It's time now for County Wide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's County Wide. Welcome to County Wide. I'm Paul David. Good to have you in studio today. Yavapai County recorder Leslie Hoffman in studio. We're going to talk a little bit about elections, a couple of bills that are going through and have gone through, and just kind of touch base with you. This is your first time on our show, huh? It is. Yeah, it last is. time. I thought you were on the show last time, but you no. weren't. Lynn and Anna were on. Yes, I was and in the equipment room. You were in the equipment room watching. Yes, That's I was right. Watching. And Anna left, and she's now working with the Board of Supervisors, Correct. And, and you're in her position. Yes. You're up for election. I am. You're I'll running be for on election the this year. Yes. Okay. Unopposed. We should probably jump into it. Uh, okay. Real quick, before we, we do get into it, you can go to yavapai.us for more information on what we're talking about today. Phone numbers for the Quad Cities area, and I'll repeat these again after the first and second break and towards the end of the show, but in uh, Prescott, Prescott Valley area, 771-3250, and in the Verde Valley, you can call 639-5807 if you've got more questions about what we're talking about today. Consolidated Elections Bill. Yes. Uh, Chip Davis was in on our last, last week, and we talked about, he just kind of mentioned it, talked about yes. a 15-page ballot and its possibility. Yes. Where are we at with this consolidated elections bill, and what is it? It's House Bill 2826, okay. and it has passed legislature. Okay. It will take effect in 2014, and the what it was passed on is it will increase voter turnout and decrease expenses by only having candidate elections on even-numbered years. However, it's going to work just in the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's going to make our ballots huge. They're going to be multi-page ballots because we'll have federal, state, county, city, town, all of the elections where candidates are on there on the ballot every other year. So we could have ballots that five, six pages double-sided. Mm -hmm. And so the expense of having those ballots, having the programs to print them, uh, the voter fatigue, you know, it's been proven voter fatigue on ballots like that are, are huge. Vote, uh, voter fallout. You get so many pages in, you're going to get tired of voting. You're going to mm -hmm. get tired of reading and not vote the end of the ballot. The local, you know, all of your local jurisdictions, they will be at the end. They're what we call it's the real estate on the ballot. They're not going to have the prime real estate. It's going to be your federal and state and county. It's going to go in those orders. So it's really, it's really taking a lot of the control away from our cities, towns, and our local government by changing this law. How does it do that? Because it's telling them you have to have your candidate elections with all the other, all the other candidates, the the big elections, your state, federal, and county elections. You can't have them on the odd years or in the springtime like most of them do now. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of them have city charters. There is a there is a case going on with a lot of the towns and cities who are uh, going to. Well, there's probably going to be a lawsuit. We are going to join in on it. You probably saw it in the newspaper. It was brought up there. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in on it, try to get this all changed because it's just it does not it doesn't work for our cities and towns. The cost, and then we've got employment. We only have four time four full time people in the elections department. We hired temps on big election years to come in and help. If we're only going to have big elections every other year, are we going to be able to keep full time employees? Then when these big elections come up, we're going to be in a position of having to hire temps to help us run those elections. And that just opens us up for problems because all of our people, all of everybody in our elections department is certified in election law. You can't, be, you can't get all these temps done in, that kind of, you know, in a short time, right before elections. So the other alternative is turn to the cities, towns, and special districts and say, we can't do your elections anymore. You're and you do all do the it. elections pretty much anymore. We do, yes, we do. And we don't do them for profit. We only, they only pay what it costs us to do those elections. So it's going to put them in a position to either buy the equipment, staff up, get all, the, all of the software, or go to for-profit companies that do elections. Mm -hmm. So it's going to increase the cost to them significantly. And, and what was the purpose of the whole the whole? Was it consolidated elections yeah. bill? The purpose that was it was uh, passed on the idea of increasing voter turnout. Okay, so more of us are going to be interested with. Uh, I'm confused. If, if more of us vote every two years, now is everybody going to have to? Because right now we have people that hold two-year terms. Correct. And some hold four-year terms. Correct. Some mayors in the Verde Valley work four years as mayor. Mm -hmm. Some two. Right. 
and voters decide that. Um, Board of Supervisors, they're they're four. They're four years now. Are they is are the four year candidates that that win? Are they mm -hmm. still working for four years in those positions, or are they? Mm -hmm. Is everybody across the board going to have a two year term period? No, we still See what I'm saying? we still keep our same our same term. Okay, but some it will change. We have some council members that will add a year to their term by going with this consolidated elections if they can't go on the ballot in an odd number year. If they have to wait till the even number year, it's going to change uh, terms even. Okay. In the very beginning. At the right, in, the in very the first cycle. Will, yeah, yeah. Okay. After the first cycle, it will all uh, all go back to our normal terms. But no, our term limits, our term times won't change. Mm -hmm. And this will happen every two years. Correct. Every two years, how many times in that year? Once. Every two, once. Okay. Once. Okay. And because elections being expensive, it's well, it will save money. But as I explained before, it's really going to work more to the opposite, and it's going to cost more than save. It sounds like it's going to be a huge ballot because our ballots are not only in English, but they're also in Spanish. Correct. Correct. Okay. And right now we are waiting for the Department of Justice to preclear. We are a preclearance state, so Department of Justice has to approve any time we change any election law, process, procedure, they have to approve it. And they have 60 days to approve it, so August 6th, we should know. They could come back and say, no, we will not approve that, and then it's dead. Or they're going to come back, they're going to approve it, and then we have to decide from there the best thing to do for all of our voters. Now, this okay. is all about the voters and, and everybody out there. Now, how are the other county recorders and elections directors across the state feeling about it? Do you know? Have you spoken? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 13 of the 15 counties were 100% against it. Then, then why did it go forward? It barely passed in the legislature. It barely only, passed. Only by okay. two. Okay. Only by two votes. Did but it it's pass. a done deal. This is yes. not something that we have to decide in the November general election. No, it's not. Unless Department of Justice kicks it out mm -hmm. and disapproves it. Then right we will on. decide it? No, then it's done. Then it's done and then it won't done. be an issue at all anymore. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So that's what we're hoping for. So we'll find out this on August 6th? Yes. Okay, I'm going to make a they note of that They do one. have the option to extend, but we're hoping to know by August 6th. Okay, all right. So, but we should know sometime in August, probably. Correct. Whether or not this is going to be moving forward. Correct. And it'll be for 2014 is when it will take effect. So we do have time, even if Department of Justice does approve this, we do have time to try to come in and maybe make some amendments or work on it and okay. decide what we want to do, put our... Put our our game hat on and and change our procedures. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Time seems to go by awfully fast anymore. Well, and laws are changing every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No. You know what? We're going to take our first break. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll talk about this top two bill. Okay. And then a few other things with you. Leslie Hoffman, Yavapai County Recorder in studio today. I'm Paul David. This is County Wide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. So, I just moved in with this family and. It's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 110 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 600% increase in the last 20 years. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. You didn't give up on sex. 
Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Welcome back to County White. I'm Paul David, Yavapai County Recorder Leslie Hoffman in studio today. We talked about the Consolidated Elections Bill. We're trying to hit on a bunch of things this morning, so follow along and then the show will re-air and, and you'll be able to hear more about it again. Uh, top two, there's yes. another one that's come up. Yes. Explain that one to me. That means that in the primary, whoever the top two vote-getters are will go to the general. So it could be two Republicans, two Democrats, two Independents. The top two vote-getters go to the general. In, in what type of an election? In any of your federal elections. Federal elections. Federal elections. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So the top two that we vote on, so the primary will be a and we've had we've had you guys in before to talk mm -hmm. about how important the primary is Correct. because a lot of things are decided in the primary. Right. And then there is no general. And like ah. Oh, right. A lot of wait. our supervisor districts will be that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the board of supervisors yes. will be done that way. Yes. We have several that are only one party running, and so primary is it. Right and, now, that won't happen. Okay. What's the goal of that? To to, to just to have to say well, okay, the primary ballot, the top two vote getters move on. Why why do it that way? <sighs> What was the reasoning, do you know? I don't really know the reasoning. I know a lot of the people that were for this were, a lot of them were your independent voters, mm -hmm. independent registrants, and they, they, don't want, they, they don't want any party deciding. They want to, whoever's the best top two of the ones, and this is something that's been talked about for a long time. Okay. It's just taken a while to get to the ballot. And other start, states do this already. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think I saw there's eight or nine other states. Not a whole lot, but there are a few. Mm -hmm. There are a few who do it. Now, do we know it's, if it works in those states? As far as I've heard, you know, the people, once they got used to it, it mm -hmm. worked It worked okay. But I'm sure there's still all the parties, your, you know, your parties still are not, they don't care for it. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing it. It's on the ballot. It did make it. Okay. They got significant number of votes plus, or okay. signatures on the petition. Well, I suppose if your party doesn't make it into the general, then you're not happy about it. But Correct. of course, if your party, two candidates do make it to the general, then right. you're fine with it. Correct. So, okay. You can't make everybody happy on that one. Uh, now, are we deciding the top two issue in November? Yes. Okay. Now, explain that one to me, if you can, as best you can, because we talked a little bit about the show, but the Consolidated Elections Bill, we're not voting on. No. It's a done deal. Correct. But top two, we are. But top Why? two is a constitutional change. Constitutional change. Therefore, it goes to the voters. I learned so much when you guys are down here. We learn, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's always changing. Every day. Every okay. day there's something new. So there's something we're going to see on the November ballot for sure is the top two. Yes. And the Consolidated Elections Bill will find out in August whether or not the Department of Justice wants that to move forward or not. Right. Okay. Let's move on to something very local, vote centers. That yes. was something new. New and exciting. We tried for, this out, though. We did. We okay. tried it in the presidential preference. Okay. But, of course, in that primary, we only had, it was only Republican and Greens who voted. So some people have not been exposed to that yet. Okay. What are and they? Vote centers means you do not have to vote in your precinct at your polling location anymore. Okay. You can vote any place you see vote here. You can pull in and vote whether you're in Cottonwood, Camp Verde, Sedona, Prescott, Baghdad. You can go in and vote. Anywhere in the state? Any No. Anywhere no. In the so, so if I'm Anywhere like in, in Phoenix county. and I want, and it's election day, I. I then no. hopefully you're a permanent early voter. Okay. And you've already voted early. Okay. But no, you'll be able to go anywhere in the county and okay. vote. You don't have to be in your precinct. And it's for the convenience of voters. Uh, just because of the, uh, a lot of it has to do with the permanent early voting list. 58% of our 125,000 registered voters vote early. And that's so the best have, in the state. Yes, it is. And yeah. the best turnout in the state. See, that's how good we are. That's right. That's We're right. very good. Yeah. And so we had, we had gone from 95 polling locations to 50 polling locations. Okay. And still at 50, we had people that we were paying to work these polling locations. We're paying them, you're paying for them. And they're sitting there for 50 people, 25 people to come through the door. So we decided it was time to think about how to consolidate our polling locations, save money, and make it convenient at the same time mm -hmm. for our voters. So now if you're dropping the kids off at school, and there's a vote center, you can pull in and vote. You don't have to go home. I work in Chino, or I work in Prescott, I live in Chino Valley. It was always very tough to get there early in the morning or late in the afternoon to vote. My precinct, now I can vote in Prescott. If I'm doing a talk over here with you, uh -huh. I can vote here on election day, should I choose to, if I'm not already on the early voting list or I haven't voted early. Why did we do that to begin with? 
It seems like a, such a simple solution and such a kind of a common sense idea. Passed. Had to get a law passed. We had to get a law passed. We had to go to the legislature. The Secretary of State was behind us 100%. They worked with us. And my elections director, Lynn Constabley, she is the one who wrote the law, and that's it's word for word, in the uh, statute book mm -hmm. to be able to do vote centers. And it says that any county may. You don't have to. Yuma is also going towards vote centers, and the city of Phoenix already does vote centers. But we're the first county to have done a complete vote center. So when did we use this last time? Was it last November? Presidential preference in February. February, okay. Yes. Oh, that's last right. It was this year. Yes. Last year we did the, we used the e-poll books so that now we don't have our poll workers flipping pages on books. They, we have our little e-poll book. Uh -huh. They can put in a name or scan a driver's license, and your name comes up. It says, oh, this is your precinct. And then you get a choice to vote on your touch screen or on paper. If, you don't, if you're voting touch screen, it codes your little card. You go to a touch screen, and you get to vote your ballot. Or it goes to what we call a ballot on demand printer. If I want to vote paper, it says this is your precinct, this is your ballot style. Mm -hmm. it goes to that ballot on demand printer, you get that and you take that and vote it. Do you ever see the state going to where we just all vote at home? Where the ballots come to us in the mail like mm -hmm. they like they do on the all vote all bail all Help me with that. Vote by mail. Vote by mail. Yes. Do they all come in where it's regardless of the, the election, election, the ballot comes to my mailbox, mm -hmm. I take it out, I go in the house, and especially if it's going to be these jumbos, have I, all the time I, in the world to do that and then get it back to you. Do you see that happening ever? Maybe. Not in the near future. Yeah. Not in the near future because that, that's a law change. And there are states who do that. Mm -hmm. I recently was in Oregon, and they do all vote by mail. Everything is vote by mail, and they love it. But it's a whole different mindset, too. A lot of people still want to go to the poll. They want to go. Is it a tradition thing center. that, that holds, it, holds, it, holds it strong? That, that keeps it in place? and people are, yes, it's tradition. And if it's always worked, then But it broke, why fix it? That right. sort of thing? Right. Okay. But we're, we're living in a world of convenience right now, and there's nothing more convenient than the mailbox at the end of your driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So that, and that's why, and it grows every day. We're at 58% now of our registered voters. All right. And in the presidential preference, of the people that voted, 79% voted early and voted by mail. Now, prior to the show, we were talk, you, you mentioned something about having to show proof of citizenship for, for yes. certain things. Tell me what some of the changes are there. That is, that's the newest change. We're waiting for the final decision. Okay. If you register to vote on a federal form, you do not have to show proof of citizenship. There is a, still the statement on the bottom, an affidavit swearing that you are a citizen, but you do not have to provide anything. Okay. On our state form, you do. You have to show your driver's license, naturalization number, and show those numbers, and of course we check those. There is a case that has been going on now for, since 2000, it's either 2004 or 2006. It's been going on for a long time, and they're trying to uh, overturn Prop 200 okay. that we passed in 2004, saying that we have to provide citizenship in the state of Arizona to register to vote. You'll still have to show ID when you get to your vote center. I was going to ask you that next. Yes, you okay. still have to show ID when you go to your vote center. Okay. But to register to vote, and we're just waiting right now. It went to the Ninth Circuit Court, mm -hmm. and it was passed back down to Judge Silver. So we're waiting for his decision on uh, registering to vote in Arizona using the form. Right now, if you use a federal form, you do not have to provide proof of citizenship. That was determined. But it all sounds so confusing to me. It's very confusing. Yeah, it's it, changes, it, it seems it's yeah, it seems it's different every time you guys come in. There's it there's is. there's a few different things and so people really need to research all this stuff and and, yes. and get aware of I need to research some of this stuff. And watch when there's legislation that comes up. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to it and Question it and talk to the people that are you know are behind it to find out what it really means. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to take another break. Okay, uh, Yavapai.us a good place for more information of this Yavapai County website. If you're in the Prescott Quad City area, seven seven one three two five zero is a phone number you want, or the Verde Valley six three nine five eight zero seven. I'm Paul David, County Recorder Leslie Hoffman in studio today. We're going to take another two minute break. We'll be right back to Countywide. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. 
You were the worst at hide and go seek. I was in junior high the first time I caught my mom using denial. She had to have known her painkillers were missing because I kept stealing them. Her denial was so out of hand. Wait, so she doesn't even know? I'm going out. It was like I could get away with anything. You kids have fun. And that was when I knew. And she was addicted to denial. Denial is a drug. Get help. The partnership at drugfree.org. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Now, some action from the courts. Billie Jean King renewing her rivalry with arthritis. First set, curious volley. And right to the net for a winner. Beautiful forehand there. Arthritis, stunned. And here, match point. Billie Jean with the ace, taking it in straight sets. Afterwards, a jubilant Billie Jean King. Tennis is a weapon for me with arthritis. There's nothing like it for me to hit a ball, run to the ball, any time, any court. I'm ready. Let's go. What's your weapon against arthritis? Find out at fightarthritispain.org. Welcome back to Countywide. I'm Paul David, Yavapai County recorder Leslie Hoffman in studio today. We've been talking about uh, well, elections, things coming up, and we have an election coming up. Why don't yes, you do. go ahead and kind of give me a rundown on the important dates? That Our we primary need to know. rundown. Well, yeah. the last day to register for the primary is July 30th. Just around the corner. Just around the corner. So please be aware if you're not registered or if you have moved. Very important that you re-register because election mail is not forwardable. So if you are a permanent early voter even, if it comes back to us, we'll try to get a hold of you. We, do every, we take every opportunity possible to get a hold of you to make sure you get to vote. Yeah, but if you've moved, changed your address, gone from P.O. Box to physical or vice versa, please contact us. Go on uh, uh, servicearizona.com, call us. Go into our office either over on 6th Street on this side of the mountain in Cottonwood mm -hmm. or in Prescott on Fair Street. Okay. And then early voting starts August 2nd. So you'll be able to go into either our Cottonwood office or Prescott office and vote early. If you're not an early voter, you, you go in and in. you vote. You don't take the ballot with you. Correct. Okay. You can go in and vote. Some people, some people like to get their early ballots. They vote them and then they bring them and drop them off. And we have drop boxes located throughout the county or take them to our office. A lot of people bring them into our office and drop them off. Okay. And you can request, even if you're not a permanent early voter, but maybe you're gonna be out of town on election day, you normally are a poll voter, just call us. We'll send you a ballot and you have up until August 17th to request a ballot. That way you don't miss the date. A lot of people are gonna be vacationing, you know, school getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our people vote. They don't want to be a permanent early voter because they do like to go in and vote and get their I voted stickers. But if they're not going to be there, that way they don't miss the opportunity. Or they can physically walk into either location and vote early. When's the election? The election is August 28th. August 28th. August okay. 28th, yes. We're just about out of time. Okay. And the last day to vote early is the 24th of August. Okay. So if you're going to vote early, vote by the 24th. Okay. All ballots in by 7 p.m. on the 28th. Yes. That, that stays, that stands solid. That's been solid ever since I've been doing news. So Yes. And then yeah. the work begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, yes. is the primary and general, last question for you real quick, are they both at the polls or is one male and one poll? Nope. They'll both be male or vote center. Okay. Male or vote center. Correct. Okay. Great. The Leslie only Hoffman? All male or, or city and towns. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. I'm Paul David. That's today's show. We'll talk to you again next time. This has been County Wide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's County Wide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.